Welcome everybody, we're again at CCIF in Calgary for the 2019 edition, it's the last one of the year. We have a really special guest today, Kiara. Hi Kiara. Nice to have you here on Trade Talks. Uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself. So my journey in automotive, I mean, people always think that maybe it was second nature because my family works in automotive. Everyone's an ICBC or they own dealerships or they're journeymen. But for me, it wasn't initially what I wanted to do. It wasn't until I actually got in there and experienced it that it's what I found that I loved. And I love that it's art that you get to do every day. Yeah, because you're a refinisher, right? Yes. Nice. So is it your first, second, or third year? How far are you in the, in the, in the journeyman okay. journey? So in BC, it's two programs. So okay. I finished my automotive refinishing prep tech. Okay. And I'm completely certified in that. And now I'm an automotive refinishing apprentice. And I have been doing it for about a year. So I have one more year left. Okay. And do you like it? I love it. You love it? Yeah. yeah. I, every day is great. Every day you get to do something cool. Yeah. And the colors are becoming so complicated in vehicles, yes. right? Like the three stages and yes. now these all these fancy paint colors out there. And um, so, you know, we're always very fascinated about the future of the workforce in automotive. You know, like... The, the trade, as we know, is um, there's a demand for talented individuals like yourself. And even more, we believe at Skills Trader that the future of the workforce is going to be women in our world, right? Uh, so when, when we heard your story, I mean, it's, it's fascinating and congratulations on Thank this you. journey. And so, but you said your family was in automotive. Is that what really drove you into it or like... And initially, I didn't want to do it because I didn't want to do just what my family did. Sure. And like growing up in a small community, people, if you tell people that's what you do, they're like, oh, of course, of course, that's what you do because yeah. everyone in the family does it. But for me, it was that it was artistic. It was a way that I could do art and still have a career. Both of my parents have arts degrees that they don't use. So it was really important for me that I had something that I could enjoy doing every day and still make good money. And that was automotive for me. So what attracted me to it was that you could get a good wage. School didn't take very long. Um, just the work environment, too. It's much more casual. It's like a community of people. Yeah. And that's really important to me. I used to, to have, um, myself, I used to own body shops. And I remember my refinishers, I used to call them the Michael Jackson of the team. Because, you know, on the body side, they could maybe hide a little bit of body yeah. work. You know? But when a vehicle goes into the paint booth, when that paint booth comes out, you know, when that car comes out of the pay booth, it has to be perfect, perfect right? Yeah, so it really no is an art. And uh, there was one fella that we used to work together, and he used to find it very relaxing. Like, he'd go into the booth, and he would spray, and he'd have his music. Yeah, you can't go in nervous. You have to just, like, calm and just go for it. Because yeah. otherwise, you start messing up, and then it doesn't come out very yeah. good. So I'm thinking about something right now. You know, a lot of people, when they think of automotive and they think of paint, they think of health issues, mm -hmm. right? They think of... Um, that it's bad for me and, yeah. and a lot of people don't know that the technology has changed from solvent to now water-based. So you probably spray water-based paint. Yes, we have water-based. Can you explain to us a little bit what water-based is? So water-based paint, like you still have to wear a mask and everything, but it doesn't have all the chemicals that the solvent-based paints have. You don't have the same type of reaction to it. Uh, it definitely doesn't smell bad like the other ones. Uh, some people say that they preferred solvent. It was easier to spray, but I've only ever had water-based, so I don't personally find that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it turns out really nice. I, now, if you're talking to the crowd over there, would you tell? Would you? Would you entice people to get in? Like, as for health concerns, you know. I had a coworker express to me because I asked him, "Oh, he's doing cleanup," and I was like, "Is there something else that you wanted to do in the shop?" And he said he didn't want to because of the health problems, but if you wear your protection and you wear your mask, then you should be fine. I mean, I, since I have family in the automotive industry, yeah. I know that, and they don't always wear protection, they're older, you know, have been mm. in the industry forever. Everyone's different. I think as long as you protect yourself, then you'll be, you'll be okay. So what advice, part of our mandate at Skills Trader, we talk this about all the time, is we want to attract more people to the trade. Yes. We want to find how do we get more people interested in automotive, interested in the technology, interested in the artistic side of it. Mm -hmm. So what advice can you give us as a, as a company or as an industry, forget the Skills Trader, how can we, what can we do out there to not only attract um, more people to the trade, but how do we attract more women to the trade? So I didn't start 
heading down the path into automotive, automotive until I was already out of high school. I wish that someone had encouraged me or told me that this option was out there. I never took shop classes. I thought that's where kids went to slack off. Yeah. Like I took more like academic courses. I, there was a push to do a four-year degree because it has more prestige, but I don't think that's the truth. I think that you should be going into schools and talking to students younger, maybe going to art classes or going to chemistry classes, classes that you might not expect that yes. people might be interested in automotive, but automotive is so broad and there's so many things that you can be involved in and not just be working on the cars or if you want to do the, it as a trade. Mm -hmm. But I think it's very narrow to just go with who you've already been advertising to. Yeah. Well, we promote training a lot of skills trainers. You know, we want to make sure that as the technology changes, as uh, new, you know, new systems come out, we want to entice people to train. And what we've developed is what we call is our score. Mm -hmm. So the higher the education, the higher the score. So your second year, as you start progressing, you'll notice that your score will start to grow. And um, what do you think about training and staying current? How important is it to stay current uh, in this industry that moves so fast? It's very important. I mean, they were talking about how 20 years things were completely different. Like, you need to keep up. Things are looking different. Like, even there's raps now, too. Like, even though that's not something that I do, I keep up with it because it's something that you see. It's something that I have to deal with. So, I think oh, it's. Wrapping the vehicle. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All these. Yeah. It'll come in with paint problems because someone took off their wrap. So, there's things that you should educate yourself, even if it's not what you're doing. And I think keeping current with everything that's going on is what makes you good at your job. That's awesome. Well, um, I know you're the star of the show here tonight. Uh, so we want to thank you and we appreciate thank having you. you here. And uh, we hope to see you progress and grow thank you. Uh, in the industry and I'm sure we'll cross paths again. Yes. Awesome. Thanks thank for you. tuning in guys. We got Kiera here. Thank you. Awesome.